Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. became a stockbroker in 1985 and launched his first business in 1990. Since then, he has successfully launched many businesses, including Cyber Athlete Professional League. Please welcome the founder, president, and chief executive officer of Mass Luminosity, Anhed Munoz. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Angel Munoz. Angel, how are we doing? Well, first of all, for a Hispanic male, Angel Munoz. Angel. See, I was going to ask you, I was like, should I just call you Angel? <laughs> I love it. I'm actually teasing. Angel Munoz is perfectly fine. I am doing fantastically well, and I wanted to tell you right off how excited I am for you inviting me to the show and, and, and the opportunity to chat with you and your audience. No, thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to be talking today about mass luminosity. But before we get into that, go ahead and introduce yourself. Who is Angel? Angel Munoz, I am the CEO, founder, and president of a company called Mass Luminosity. Uh, we're about to enter our 12th year, 12th year in business, and we own several properties, um, uh, including G Tri, Beacon, Beam, and next year we're launching a new property, or maybe next year, we're hoping next year, uh, that's called Singularity. So. Nice. So mass luminosity for the, for the listeners at home, what is it? Well, mass luminosity is a company that's basically uh, based on a few principles. Ultimately, it's based on the principle that isolation and loneliness is not a good state for human beings. So that we, uh, we rename, we've referred to that as fragmentation. And our role, we see our role as um, using technologies to help defragment uh, human communication, bring people together, like like right now through one of our platforms. And how was this concept created? Uh, awkwardly and and, <laughs> <laughs> and without a business plan, frankly, um, it was just it was a response to uh, Gabriel to the um, fragmentation. Uh, and negative discord that I uh, saw in social media. I saw the transformation of social media from an instrument of unity to an instrument of division and how the companies profited from that. So we went a bit against the current and decided that we wanted to do things that were the opposite of that. So we're Angel, we we're talking about kind of how the concept was created. How difficult though is it to create something, you know, you're essentially creating social media and you're turning it on its head, right? You're creating a whole new way to see it. How difficult has that been? Well, um, it wasn't difficult in the sense that there were a lot of critics about it. They were just more skeptics about why even try that when the whole world is going in one direction. And um, that's never stopped me before um, in my career. Uh, so I was just compelled uh, to provide people with an alternative. You know, it seems like the world is based on a binary system, you know, up, down, black, white, et cetera. But when I told people Facebook, what is the opposite? There were no one could say what the opposite was. So, so that's, I, I really, I wish I could be more thorough about that response, but I don't even listen to, you know, it, yeah. it, to be an entrepreneur, the first lesson that you can uh, pass on to your audience is, you have to be completely convinced that you're right and the entire world is wrong. <laughs> and if you can't do that, then you may, you may invite the devils of failure into your, into your, into your realm. Uh, I was completely convinced that with time and effort, um, we would succeed. Um, I was able, you know, I, I was the first investor in the company, uh, beyond being the founder. So, um, we operated with for many years, just on, on a small investment. 
and we were able to attract lots of people eventually. In fact, our social media network, which is a niche network, not a wide network, that has no advertising and does not tolerate any of the nonsense that occurs elsewhere, uh, is about to hit 6 million people, and we've never advertised. Wow. You know, not one time. We've never promoted it. We've never done any campaign for it. So That is incredible. In fact, one of the things you kind of talked about, you alluded to, was financing. You're the first financer. How did you finance this company? Is it a grassroots effort, or have you been working with venture capitalists? Well, uh, there's different stages of a company. You know, where are you at the time? Um, and, the you know, our our goals were so far reaching, and I knew they were going to take so long that I, you know, I, I've, I've enjoyed a certain amount of success in life, so I was able to invest in the company in the beginning to sort of finance the early stages of the company. When I say early stages, I think it was five years before, maybe even six, before we actually um, um, looked for outside capital. Uh, what happened was that my friends that have known me for many years, uh, including Kimberly Visaraga, this our CTO, and some other people, wanted to be part of this um, of this venture. They wanted to, uh, they believed in what I was trying to do, and still believe in what I'm trying to do, or we're doing actually. And they uh, all started investing first small amounts and then larger amounts, and we were able to raise a little over, a, I think, close to two million dollars from friends. And then that was about five years ago or a little longer. And then uh, recently we, we um, now are working on Beacon, which is probably the, the product that you would like to talk about or in our service. And then we, um, we have our first venture firm that's invested in it. And, um, and we will be doing an offering uh, sometime in January. It'll be an offering that's open not only to institutional, but individuals also. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, we have a lot of interest for it. <laughs> I, you know, it's so funny, Gabriel, because um, life is just a very unique thing. So, um, you know, it's all cyclical. It's like, you know, um, as you get older, you you start meditating on on you. Start, you for me, uh, age is more about. Con- trying to arrive at some conclusions about life <laughs> and, and, and and in that process one of them is you have to understand the cycles of life and you have to align yourself with them you cannot battle those cycles you cannot flatten the circle you cannot you know you cannot uh you can't you have to so right now we're in a really positive cycle in fact i will also tell your audience that we dared and were um kind of bold and rejecting a buyout offer from one of our divisions, Beacon, the platform that we're on right now, for $80 million. So we just wow. thought that was too small. And so, Anhed, you know, one of the things you were, you were mentioning is, in fact, this product that we're on right now, Beacon. Can you explain a little bit more what Beacon is and what you're hoping to try to accomplish with this new platform? Right, of course. Um, I First of all, uh, if, if you don't mind, I'll give you a little bit of history of how Please, Beacon yeah. came about. Um, so one of the principles of Mass Luminosity as a company is that we want people, our employees and staff members, to live where they're most comfortable living. So we do not want them coming to an office at all. We want people to work and live where they want. So we So what's happened is, you know, we're spread out. In the U.S., you know, as as you probably know, Robin is uh, our PR person that is out in the Northeast, and uh, Kimberly and I are in Dallas. Theodor Atroshenko, who, who is our CTO, is uh, in Portugal. We have programmers in Portugal. We have programmers in East Europe. We have pro, uh, program. We have people all over the world. We have you know people working in Indonesia, and people live where they want to live. You know that is the way that we did it. But the problem with that was that using any of the existing solutions seem uh, disconnected. And it seemed like you were not in the same room with the person and that you were not connecting. So six years ago, a little over six years actually, I proposed to Theodore to create a, you know, him and his team to create a solution for us that worked well and it made us feel like we were working in the same room. And, uh, um, I wish it would have probably, you know, looking back at it, I probably would have um, probably put the sights a little lower because what happened is it took us six years of work to get it to this level. 
And the level is of, you know, high resolution and the aspect ratio and the frames per second and it just a, a myriad of things that make our experience so different from what people are used to. It's, it's quite impacting. Uh, for the first time you experience Beacon and you go, wow, this is really something at the next level. So, so that was the story behind it. And Beacon is, as probably everybody's guessed, is uh, at its core, although it's a lot more than that, it's a video conferencing service or platform that really is based on trying to um, emulate as much as possible the nuances of reality and how we perceive reality and what and how we can suspend this belief if if we may on you are talking to me and you feel like you're really actually talking to me for that we have to modulate sound we have to do so many different things saturate certain colors uh so that it feels somewhat real yeah and you know i got to tell you folks listening right now I'm, uh, this is my first time using this, this platform. I am absolutely loving it. I love the big buttons. It's really easy. So when you're navigating, you have all the big buttons on the left and right. When an individual was speaking, there's this nice little purple uh, tone of color that kind of indicate that individual was speaking. They have different video settings. So standard uh, uh, definition versus high definition for your, I'm telling you, I look great on this video right now. I was telling, I was telling on head. I was like, man, I look tan right now. This is a great system. I look so much better, but I'm telling you, it really is a good system. Easy. Again, this is coming from somebody who has used WebEx, has used Teams, has used Zoom. I mean, I have gone down the virtual uh, carousel of different platforms. Now, I'm not trying to sell anybody on any product, but I am saying user-friendly. This is very user-friendly. This is very easy to use. Uh, don't use it on Safari. We actually had this conversation <laughs> earlier. Just don't <laughs> use it on Safari. But it's really, really nice. Now, how how difficult has it, because again, you know, I just named off Zoom, WebEx, Teams, right? All these other platforms. How difficult is it to build Beacon, right, a, a platform for video conferencing in such a competitive market? Well, um, I don't, I don't see a lot of competition at all, and that's really what we emphasize. Um, we actually our marketing uh, campaign and and our motto is not really. It's interesting. It's when real matters. That's our that's our model. So if you don't mind looking like a cartoon and having you know ten <laughs> frames per second and it looks like you're back in the '80s in a disco and the strobe lights are on, you're fine. Stay there. We don't care. You know, you don't care. We don't care. But we made it easy. We made it very easy. Number one is as you mentioned, it works inside of a browser, so no one has to install anything. So that whole objection of I don't want to install something else. Well, you don't have to install it. You just have to, you get a link, as you know, and you click on the link. It opens the browser that you have assigned to be your default browser, and it works. That's just the way it, that way it goes. Um, as you said, we counter indicate. <laughs> we basically try to guide people away from Safari. It works in Safari, but there are particular problems that Apple does not address in their, in their WebKit uh, protocol. And uh, so it's a little bit, you know, odd there, but, you know, there's so many browsers uh, on the market right now. And the number one browser happens to be Chrome from Google. And then the second uh, uh, most famous browser now is Edge from Microsoft. And it's a Chromium browser. It's based on Chrome. So, you know, they, you know, as I said, when we were offline, Google or so they really have the best browser on the market. It's, you know, it's. Uh, it's personal preference, and the second best will be Firefox. Yeah. So, um, so it's easy. Um, one of the things that I like about it, uh, Gabriel, is that you can, when you move your mouse over the screen, the buttons, the buttons slide in. Yeah. When you, uh, when you, uh, when the mouse basically is still, the those columns slide out with all the buttons. So now you're completely focused on the person. These are the nuances and the differences that I think will make, uh, will make a difference in the, in the audience. Um, I, I, what, what I find is that when people use it, they have the same reaction as, as you just did. It's very typical of going, this is far better looking than anything I've ever seen before. And, and you also mentioned the simplicity of it. And so for listeners at home, as, as Anne had mentioned, it does in fact work in Safari. I, I didn't mean to say it does not work in Safari. However, I, I think to kind of also go into the, the simplicity of it, 
I really can just copy and paste this link and put it into any browser and it's going to pop up. It, it, it was so, so simple. Now, Anhed, you also talked about marketing. How do you market this product and who is your target audience? Well, um, we, we're fortunate enough that we have a big following. So right now, um, Beacon, free, the free version of Beacon has been in the market a little over a year. And we have nearly 650,000 people uh, wow. using uh, Beacon, which is not small. I mean, it may be small from a perspective of other companies, but that's uh, that's really nice. And the requests that we get are interesting. We, Teodor and I get, Teodor again, Atroshenko is our CTO. We get lots of requests from people that want to deploy it in businesses and, you know, for large companies and all that. So there is an appetite for that. And that's, we will focus on that later next year uh, because right now we want to make sure that we have the momentum that is, that comes from, um, from the general public. And we, we've always done well in all our businesses before with addressing that market first. But furthermore, um, we do have, we are going to announce fairly soon, maybe as soon as next week, that we do have some partnerships with celebrities and all that that have chosen uh, to use Beacon and are going to go be vocal about it. And then we're also... Um, we're, you know, one of my biggest concerns and, and you know, I'm writing, uh, so I'm in my sixties now, so I'm writing the last chapter of my life. And one of the biggest concerns that I have is, you know, uh, what is the legacy you leave behind and, and how did I, did I really, did I really try to make the world a better place? And yes, you know, um, it could be argued that all the things that I've done in technology have helped people, but I wanted to be more direct than that. So um, you'll hear about our partnerships with charities and how we will tie in the paid version of Beacon directly with helping uh, people who happen to have not, not have the same opportunities as everyone else. And one of the things you just mentioned too is, you know, other business ventures before this. What was your first business as an entrepreneur? What was your first entrepreneur endeavor? Um. I've never been asked that before. The first <laughs> one. So I was a stockbroker. That was my first career choice. Before that, I worked at, on IBM mainframes. But my first real career choice was to become a stockbroker. That was my first job. And then I decided uh, I sort of leaned more into the investment banking. And um, and my, wa- my, my wife that uh, has now passed and I launched two businesses together. Uh, one was a brokerage brokerage firm, and the other one was the investment banking arm of it. And so, um, uh, so that was one venture. But I think even before that, I was partnered with a group out of um, uh, they were a company that was in um, Louisiana, not Louisiana, excuse me, in Missouri, and um, uh, in Arizona, and um, no, I'm sorry, in New Mexico. And uh, and we formed a company uh, to bring an orphan drug. Uh, orphan drug means, for your audience that doesn't know that, it means a, a drug that uh, not only has lost its patent, but no one's prescribing it anymore. And in some cases, you can petition the Food and Drug Administration to allow it to become an over-the-counter. There's a process for that. And they recruited me to do that, to go through that process and 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 the and the idea was uh, based on the research of of two uh, scientists that it would have an impact in in your recall of things, and uh, and this is by the way the 80s, and uh, and you know now they're called cognitive enhancers. There's a whole category of products, but we have the first one on the marketplace called dimethyl aminoethanol, and uh, and now you can still buy it over the counter. Uh, DMAE, and um, and I still take it today. So I started in my 20s, and I still take it. And so please don't judge me for for how hard it is for me to remember <laughs> things from the 80s. No. The 80s were really good. The 80s were really good to me. Uh, the 80s no. are great. I mean, <laughs> great things came out of the 80s, like myself. Now, what would what would you say? You know, throughout your experience, has been like the most. You know, one of those moments. I'm like, this was the most. I'm so glad I lived through this moment because it 
gave me a lot of experience in that I needed to be successful today. Well, that any time that you have a problem or a challenge, that's the opportunity. That's a lesson right there. But I, it, as far as pivotal moment, uh, I have to. I, I had the opportunity. Well, I uh, one of my other uh, ventures that I worked with Kimberly, uh, Kimberly Visaraga again, our CMO. Uh, was um, in esports. Esports is the, or electronic sports, is the idea that you can present video game competitions as a professional sport. And uh, that was, frankly, my idea. So, um, and um, I got a phone call from a uh, the office of a person that I did not know. And they said that Len Reggio wanted to meet with me. And he is famous in the Northeast, but no one in the, you know, nobody really knows who he is here in the, he's definitely in the South, but he is the founder and he's created the concept of Barnes and Noble. And he's obviously a billionaire many times over. And I went over to meet with him. Uh, he just wanted to, to meet with me and talk about the future. And it's something that he does. He finds entrepreneurs that are interesting and that are radically different from the norm. And he wants to get to know them. And I spent a whole day with him and his wife, Louise. And when I went to leave, he leaned over to me and he said, remember always that life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that was pivotal for me, coming from him. And that's how I've lived my life since. Knowing that the things that I say about things actually determine the path of my life. So. Wow. And Ned, now eSports, I got I got to ask about esports now. Two billion dollar industry. <laughs> the two billion dollar, and you know, I've had guests started by a started by a Latino. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, and so let's let's kind of talk about how that kind of came to fruition. Um. Uh, so Kimberly and I, we've worked together for many years. We had a website um, that was for gamers. Um, at the time, it was the number one website in the world called Adrenaline Vault. Uh, awkward name, kind of <laughs> strange, but people would call it Avolt, and and it was very famous. But in op, uh, I'm watching gamers and mostly PC gamers at the time. Uh, we realized that these people were competing. Uh, um, you know, Kimberly's an athlete. She she's competed. You know, she's just a, a natural athlete. So um, so you know, we saw this sense of competition that people had. And, um, and I, um, um, was sitting in my office one day and this term just, I don't know from where came in my head of the term cyber athlete. So I, uh, asked my wife, um, what she thought, what, when you, when I say the term cyber athlete, what do you think? And she was like, not sure. Maybe is it somebody that competes in a virtual environment. And I'm like, precisely. So I called our attorney um, at the time, our IP attorney, and had a trademark, the term cyber athlete. And within six months of that experience, we launched the Cyber Athlete Professional League. And 1997 was the first professional league for gamers in the world and became the largest league. We were in ever, basically doing events in almost all continents around the planet. And it basically launched the entire industry. In fact, Every esports organization today has its roots online, so they all should be paying me a tax. <laughs> I love it. I the, love it. The millions they make was because of me and Kimberly that worked so hard to to do that. And we were very inspired uh, by it, and it was fun, but it was also very tiring. So when a Chinese company came around, it was a Singaporean Chinese company, and they said they wanted to be. Kimberly already had taken. You know, she had left because she was so tired of it. It was just really brutal. Yeah. And I was just hanging uh, on the last thing. And I said, gone. It was a fair offer. It wasn't fantastic, but it was a fair offer. And it was gone. And I hear that they still do events in China under the term Cyber Athlete Professional League. So That is incredible. And, and you know, to your, to your point, eSports since 1997 has absolutely exploded in the United States and worldwide, right? Uh, in fact, right. I had a former guest uh, come on the Net VR, where his whole concept is to create a virtual reality theater. So when gamers, right, so you go on games and you watch them stream, well, as the individual streaming, he wants the individuals that are actually 
watching the stream to be able to congregate and collaborate with each other. So he's creating a virtual space. So they have virtual avatars. So when this gamer's up on stage playing their video games, the, the, the people that are watching can go ahead and have like a little networking opportunity to talk about that event. And it's really, I, I feel like there's so many different avenues, you know, in the, the e-world sports space. But in, in general, just, just in the technology world, there's a lot of space to be, to be growing in. Now, what would it was, you say? Listen, it was, yeah. it was a little fortuitous. It was definitely fortuitous. There was a little serendipity, but it, we were the ones that did all the, all the work. Our first event had maybe 300 people show up. And by year, let me see, by, year, by the year 2000, so three years later, maybe 2001, there were 8,000 people wow. at the events. Wow. And it, was, it grew really quickly. We knew that we were writing a phenomenal wave. We had many offers to sell it. We didn't. And then at the end, we ended up selling it. And I just thought that it was a fantastic contribution on taking something that was pretty much a um, lonely type of endeavor and make it a social thing. You know, that's really what I liked about it. And, uh, and people who were athletes, that's why I mentioned that Kimberly was, uh, an athlete were completely comfortable with the idea that that was a different level of competition. The only critics came from people who watch sports and didn't think that was, you know, a watchable sport. Well, you know, I'm happy to say after 27 years, they were wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a, a new generation of people grew up watching uh, esports and like it. I, so, I agree. You know, the events, the events can have up to 100,000 people in them. And, so and that's ESPN. incredible. Right now you're on ESPN, you're on ESPN2, you're on actual sports channels, sports networks, streaming, right? right? These live events. You know, it's, I it's, really, I, I, the, the vindication for me, because, you know, you have to understand that did not, it, people were not applauding. That was, <laughs> they, they were ridiculing us left and right. The press was having a field day with us. But now recently, the, um, you know, the Olympics are yep. now talking about having esports, and that's my ultimate vindication. So, so I feel really uh, accomplished in, my, in, in what we did in our contribution of over. I mean, we, we were in that, we ran esports for, I think it's 13 years. It wasn't like wow. it was, you know, it was a long time from zero yeah. to all the way to these massive events. The last event we did, the last large event, was a million dollar price. And, um, and that was unheard of at the time. Yeah. And I, I hope the listeners also get some inspiration from this story because this is truly creative entrepreneurship 101, right? You're sitting at home, you're starting to think, what, what do we, what do we define this as? Some things are non-defined right now. An entrepreneur's job is to really help define what some things are, even if it's innovative and new, right? You created an innovative and new kind of, uh, world for a lot of people and now it's now it's very very much a part of our society, as you mentioned. It's going to be in the Olympics someday, and and you know for folks at home, don't lose your creative sense of uh, of your, your creative self. Uh, you know, always think creatively, always think innovatively. On head, he just mentioned he's he's only sixty years young, you know, and he's still creating, he's still innovating, and so that's that's a big piece. Now, on head, what? What would you say kind of keeps you up or is there something that's always you're always thinking about in particular with Beacon right now? Is there anything that you're kind of always thinking about, always trying to work for that, that kind of keeps you up at night? I think it's a sense of mission. Our principles are clear and it's our sense of mission. If we really want to defragment, uh, you know, human communication, we really there's so much work to be done on that front. And um so I'm a perfectionist. That's not a good thing necessarily. <laughs> and um, so, um, you know, as Kimberly and all, all the people that were watching, Robin Wright Bell, our, our PR person, they were watching the development of Beacon. Yeah, it, you know, it was great, like creating an art piece. Um, and, you know, it was ugly in the beginning. It was really ugly. And it was very frustrating because we tried, we went for the impossible. You know, how do you make this lifelike, you know, and you're using a browser and you're subject to the Internet. And um, and it wasn't until the very last moment, right, few months before we launched Beacon that we just it clicked. We actually it's actually an interesting story. I don't want to tell all the details, but we ended up having to seek advice from 
people who were deep into the uh, protocol that's called WebRTC. And Theodore had the foresight, uh, again, Theodore Antroshenko, our CTO, had the foresight to contact a person in Israel that, uh, that had vast experience with this protocol. And he quickly told Theodore what we were doing wrong. And how he was encouraging, like to a certain degree, because we were attempting what should be attempted with this protocol. But uh, and then he gave us some guidelines. And of course, Theodore's a kind of person you just give him a little bit and then explode it in his head. And he goes, "This is the way to go." And then we would kind of went nuts, and then it started working. So really, it was this one person out of Israel that ended up having an impact on the, it, it was almost like a curvature. And then it, it's been this experience that I'm actually can tell you I'm proud of. This is the product that I envisioned. And it came, not only was the hard work, but some person in Israel that just knew what we were doing could see it. And, and we send them the graphs and all that, or, or, or he actually asked to see uh, how we were doing and said, this is what you need to do. And you adjust this and then magic happened. Yeah. You, you know, I think a lot of times entrepreneurs, especially new entrepreneurs, they have this sense of scarcity when it comes to communicating their idea, right? Or, or their innovative thought, because they're always fearful that somebody's going to take that idea and run with it themselves. What advice would you uh, have? You cannot, you can, you, I see that as an investment banker and as people, and as a person that people come for advice, you see that all the time and you, you nailed it. That is the worst thing you can do. Yes. Please tell, yeah, tell, tell, them why. Have, tell the entrepreneurs why well, this is a bad the, idea. The universe is abundant. It's not, it's not, it's not lacking. It's abundant and ideas float around from everyone. You, if, when you catch an idea, there could be 10 people on the planet that catch the idea. Yep. It's not, it's, it's just a miraculous process of abundance. Nature is abundant. We, you know, we, we just look at things by what we don't have. That's marketing. That's the effects of advertising in our brain. In reality, life is abundant. We have, look at this, We're st all of us are sitting, there's, pe there's people for your uh, listeners to know that are watching the call with us and are on the call with us, but they're not gonna be visible. And we all have the time and the technology to be having this multi-communication that is crossing, uh, uh, it's a across two countries. This is miraculous. Yeah. What other time in history could you do something like this? We will all be busy in agriculture. You know, this is a great time. It's a beautiful time to be alive. And so I challenge people to say, go out and this thing, oh, you're going to have to, uh, uh, you're, gonna, you're going to have to sign a non-disclosure if I tell you my, my, you make yourself look foolish. I never do. Somebody goes, oh, yeah, I got an idea, but you have to find a, uh, uh, a non-disclosure. I'm like, I'm not, I don't know if your idea is unique. I don't know what you're, yeah. tell me what it is. And then, yep. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you, you'll, you'll probably steal it. Well, then you don't trust me. Yeah. Why it, do you want to, you you want my money or you want my investment or you want my advice, but you don't, but you don't, but I don't have your trust. So no, look for someone else. So that's really where people go wrong. They go wrong all the time by being so protective Instead of going out there and going like we did and going here, here's what we're doing. Look what we're doing. Open book to this person. We don't even know. And and it goes, yep, here it is. Here's your problem. This is what you need to do. I can't remember what it was. Theodore probably can can, can yeah. state, but I, but it was something we had to do with jitter and managing, blah, blah, blah. And boom, all of a sudden we had a call and it was perfect. I was, I was, I was almost moved to tears. I was like, <laughs> this is it. This is what we have been looking for. And then we had, you know, uh, a group of people that we worked with at the time, and I couldn't wait to do a call, and everybody was amazed. <laughs> it's like, it works. <laughs> so, it's like, I felt like Frankenstein, you know, it's alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and to that end, how important has networking been to your career? It's everything. It's not only what you know, it's who you know. Exactly. Everybody loves that. You know, networking is important. you got to select the people that, first of all, as an entrepreneur, you have to select the people who are challenging to you. They don't, you don't want a bunch of people that agree with you all the time. I used to tell me, my dad owns um, restaurants, and he used to say, if two people in business agree on everything, one of them is unnecessary. Yeah. What do you point. need to agree on everything for? That's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> so you want the contrast of opinions and yeah, is it, is it comfortable? No, 
you know, um, when I go to a board meeting, I, I have a thing that I read, but, um, you know, it says, my ego is my enemy. My opponent is my teacher. Oh, interesting. So think, think about that. My ego is my enemy. <laughs> and people, I see it all the time. I see it all the time. You say something and it rubs the ego of a person the wrong way, and right away you get a reaction. It, and then, yeah, you know, it's a natural state, but you shouldn't do that. What are you defending? Yeah. <laughs> what are you protecting? Yeah. What do you have to prove? You know, it's just conversation, and, you know, we can be wrong. We can be right. Yeah. So every time, right before, I have it on my phone, and I look at it, I go, because, you know, I have a very sophisticated board of directors composed by the ex-chief financial officer of Revlon and the ex-CEO uh, of Virgin Atlantic that works directly with Richard Branson. We have the former head of cognitive enterprise for IBM. These are big minds, right? right yeah. You don't you don't walk in there with 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 you know with your skin you know ready to take injury. You got to have tough skin. So I, it took me a while. I have to say it took me a while to understand the dynamics of having a board like that. But I don't you know I feel I feel privileged to work with people like that now. Very privileged. So yeah, I repeat it again. My ego is my enemy. That's the thing. My ego is my enemy. My opponent is my teacher. I love it. I love it. Now you were kind of mentioning, you know, about being open and honest. So where, where, you know, the five-year plan for Beacon, where, where do you envision Beacon? Are you kidding me? <laughs> five years. <laughs> I just want to get to next year. <laughs> we're only a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, of course you got to come up with the illusions of five-year plans and all that. I just think that um, the way to present this correctly and what we're building right now is an entire communication platform. So uh, one of the things that we're very excited about is the fact that we can do so many things with the platform, including the fact that we are going to take on Twitch. For those people who do not know the company Twitch, it's a streaming platform that was launched independently. And I think it was six years ago, please, you know, you're, you're, I, please check that because I'm not absolutely sure, was purchased by Amazon for near 900 million. And, um, and, and it's the premier and most used streaming platform in the world right now. Yep. And uh, the level of discontent by content providers and streamers has increased dramatically over the last five years. Uh, many people have come into the field to compete and have gone out of business because uh, there is particularly particular uh, segments of the business that are very costly. And if you do not have the resources normally to bypass those, you're going to fail. There's no question about it. So I can name several platforms that some of them are actually still around, but now a pale shadow of what they intended to be, uh, and Twitch continues to shine. Well, Beam will be coming to be the competitor, so to take on the giant. I like it. And, and we announced that we were uh, doing a, a closed beta for it. We haven't even launched the closed beta yet. And I think if I'm correct, we had 13,000 people signed up right wow. away and over 2,000 channels names reserved. Wow. So, so this is not insignificant no, not for a, for a, for, but we have beacon to show that we've mastered the art of making beautiful, you know, uh, video transmissions online. So, and this competitor, you said so, it's gonna be called beam, correct? Beam and 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 as you say that, uh, some people, if they have if they uh, have been in, are familiar with 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 the evolution of of streaming of streaming platforms, will click we tell you well he's basically they took that name from someone else, and I will explain that yes they will be right there was a Beam that was launched uh, I think five years ago and maybe even a little longer and and in the fourth month fifth month of 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 actually they were just gaining momentum they were purchased by microsoft 
and they were renamed Mixer. Oh, and yeah, then okay. Mix, yeah, and then Mixer uh, made some moves. Uh, you know, paid what I thought were L, um, outrageous amounts of money to top streamers to have them there streaming on their platform at a moment of success. But then it started dropping, and now Mixer has been closed, and Microsoft is out of it. But what they uh, what we discovered is that Beam was never was never a registered trademark of theirs. So we decided to revive the name and go back to it. So <laughs> I love it. And I know I know there's a lot of streamers and gamers that listen to it. I know I use Twitch often as well. So it's too, I'm going to jump on Beam to get my username quickly. Because again, you uh -huh. have to be a first mover in some of these things. And if you want to be a true entrepreneur, sometimes you got to be a first mover, right? You got to get in there. Twitter early, you got to LinkedIn early, Facebook early, right? Yeah, the thing about it is, you know, I, I don't know why people make a big deal of that. Um, you know, if you're in a bit, if you're in a space and you have an opportunity to just grab real estate somewhere else, even if you continue on Twitch, you have the real estate yep. just haste. So I don't understand why some people go, well, I'm already on Twitch and blah, blah, blah. And I don't, you know, okay, great. You know, stay there. <laughs> yeah. And um, of course there's going to be advantages. Um, you know, our payouts are higher uh, than, than Twitch. That's something that we've always done anyway. So that's, um, that's typical for the way that we think of things. And, uh, and we, we, you know, the technology is going to be better and our latency is lower. If you, that's what you, you know, if you want zero latency, you can do zero latency. So we're going to launch in 120 countries at one time. So we, this is not a regional wow. US only. So we are serious. And when you hear about it, you're going to go, okay, wow, these guys definitely are serious, but you know, that's how we, that's how we are. That's that's par for the course when yeah. it comes to mass luminosity. <laughs> and I don't know if you've realized mass luminosity, light related, beacon, light related, beam, beam, yeah, light related. I love it. I'm real yeah. life in the marketing <laughs> traction right now. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking, so we, of, speaking of marketing. We stay with, we stay with the photons. <laughs> yeah. <duh. laughs> so speaking of like marketing, how, and, and if folks are interested or listening, if they want to learn more about beam or want to know more about beacon, how can they find, or maybe want to introduce themselves to you, Anhed? How can they learn more about Anhed? How can they learn about Beacon? How can they learn about Mass Luminosity and all these other uh, ventures you're doing? How Social media, web pages, where can they find you? So um, uh, I'm probably the one CEO that has an email for the general public. Angel at GamingTribe.com. Anyone can email me there. So I just don't mind that at all. I love hearing from people. Yes, you get the occasional nutcase, but it's... <laughs> so rare that, you know, it's one out of a hundred. It's not worth not eliminating the 99 great people that you talk to. Um, but Beacon uh, is, has two domains. Uh, the free version of Beacon, which is the one that we're on now, by the way, uh, is called Beacon X. So X just means free in our, in our, in our mind. And BeaconX.com is where you would get the free version. When we launch the paid version, which we're launching, we were going to launch it this year, but the holidays are around. And so we're going to wait until until January. Plus, we want we have to. Kimberly and I are, are working on a, on a communication campaign, which is the way that we like to state it instead of marketing campaign. And we want to get everything right. You know, it's not just now the technology is also the messaging. Plus, we have to give time to Robin to make sure that she contacts people. So we we want to really stay. We, it's a it's a it's a really great product, and it's called Beacon Max. And we really want to stay, and it's paid, so it's fourteen ninety five. But the great thing about it is, again, for those that react quickly, uh, they'll be the first people who sign up for the first thirty days, thirty forty five days. Uh, it's fourteen ninety five for five months instead of fourteen ninety five a month. So you get to really experience the product. That's a long time, yeah. and then you decide if it's for you or not. So that that is be, uh, that's beaconmax.com. So, and there, and there is a site there, although it's not completely, uh, finished, but it's, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see it. And then, um, as far as mass luminosity is mass .com. And me personally, if they want to know what my background is, angelmunoz.com. We made all the domains easy. I like it. <laughs> I like it. 
And so. thank you, man. Thank you again so very much. Again, all this information, folks that are listening, a great reason for you to subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter. This information will be on the newsletter. Uh, on head will be featured the week before the episode airs, the week the episode airs, and as well as the week after. We'll also have links uh, to Mass Luminosity uh, Beacon. We'll try to get all those information on the newsletter, and we'll make sure we'll have the independent website page for this episode as well. Anhed, thank you again so much. Is there anything you would like to uh, let the listeners know before we leave? Um, just, you know, I think that the secret to success is to be real and to be yourself and to express, not be embarrassed of who you are. Uh, a friend of mine once told me that it's better to be yourself because everyone else is taken. And I truly believe that that's the case. So might as well just express your own light and your own way and hope that you have enough people that appreciate that around you to make your life a success in anything you do. Angel, man, I got a Rolodex of quotes just from this episode. I'm telling you. Angel Munez from Mass Luminosity. Thank you so much, folks listening. Please subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter at theshadesofe.com. You can also follow me on the social sites at the Shades of E. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.